What's going on guys? Dr. Root 7 signing in. This is going to be, you guessed it right by now, about the PlayStation Vita. PlayStation Vita was one of the most ignored releases by Sony. As soon as they released this console, they just decided to ditch it. Despite of all the great potential this console had, but Sony just decided to dump it into the garbage. PlayStation Vita, one of my most personal favorite consoles, the successor of the most popular PlayStation Portable that showed a lot of promise. However, Sony, due to their bad marketing and some bad decisions, is what led to such outcome. This console is Sony's second handheld release. To be quite honest, it was way ahead of its time. It has a lot of functionality. You can remote play, use it as a remote play device by connecting it to the PlayStation 4, which was my original reason to purchase this. I do graveyard shifts and things get really slow at nighttime and I was like, you know what, why not just connect to my PlayStation 4 through the Vita using remote play and spend some time. Do not do that at work, guys, but yeah. The screen is touch screen based and this backside it's also touch sensitive. You are able to execute commands by tapping the back. Even though I don't like this feature a lot because it gets like, due to the compact design of the PlayStation Vita, it gets like a bit hard to execute the commands by tapping the back, but there are accessories that makes things easier. You are also equipped with an inbuilt camera. Yeah, this, this is a very compact console that showed and had a lot of promise. However, it was totally thrown down into the gutter. The reason of me talking about this console is because I'm going to make a series of contents that is going to be about the PlayStation Vita jailbreak. Why do you want to jailbreak the PlayStation Vita? Because it's going to give you access to a whole lot of things including retro gameplay, really decent library of games, first party titles, even though there were only a handful of them. Vita had some solid releases. These are some of the games that I have, but obviously I'm a niche collector. So I started collecting games, uh, some limited edition games. Some of them are here. Maybe I'll make a separate video showing you guys my collection. This is my second Vita console, which is the Glacier White. Both of them are 1000 models, so they do not have inbuilt memories. I'm going to tell you guys some of the essential stuff that you require in order to start the jailbreaking process. So since the 1000 models do not come in with inbuilt memories, you are required to get one of these specialized PlayStation Vita memory cards. One of the reasons why the Vita didn't do so well because these were very expensive. You're not able to connect any standard micro SD cards into the console. I also have one of them here. It's an 8GB one. This is very much required to start with the jailbreaking process. So make sure that you acquire one of these. If you have a 2000 series model, you do not need to worry because it has an inbuilt storage capacity. Another thing that you guys are required to have is an SD to Vita adapter. You can get one of these very easily by ordering them on Amazon. I'm going to put the links in the description. However, they're going to be only for Canadian users. What this adapter does is it will enable you to insert a standard size micro SD card. You can use this as one of the Vita's cards, which so this is going to help you to increase the storage capacity of the PlayStation Vita. This is a must have and make sure that you have one of these already. I'm going to jailbreak this console, the Glacier White. It's freaking awesome. I really wanted one of these and it came in great condition. I got a good price for it. Yeah, this handheld console came in bundled with a bunch of goodies, including the memory card. I think he gave me two memory cards, each of four gigabytes with all these games. This case alone is very expensive. It's a very good sturdy case. He also gave me an extra case as well. All of these came for a whopping $120. This one came in modded. The person who was selling that to me, I just told him to take off the mod. Yeah, that guy was kind of an asshole, was charging extra if the console came in modded. So he just sold this to me for $100 without the mod which is pretty still a decent deal. I'm very much happy about that. 
I'm going to show you guys how to mod this console. Another thing that you guys need to know, make sure you have QMCA installed before all of this. So I'm going to see you guys on the next episode where I'm going to show you guys how to perform the jailbreak. All right, guys. So taking into consideration, you have watched my previous video where I explain what you need in order to jailbreak the PlayStation Vita. So let's now move on to the jailbreak process. Before everything, make sure that your PlayStation Vita's firmware is updated to its latest version. You can do it by going into settings, system update and update using Wi-Fi. Additionally, if you want to check the Vita's firmware version, you can go into system, system information and you will get the system software, the firmware version right at the top. The current and the latest firmware version is 3.74. I have updated it to its latest version. Additionally, what you would want to do is log into your PlayStation ID. That is going to enable you to synchronize your trophies of the games that you're going to play. Point to be noted, you can either use your primary PSN ID or you can make a separate one. Using your primary ID will not result in a ban. Okay, making sure of all of those things, let's now move on to the jailbreak process. Go to these two links in the description, download final HE version 1.93 win32.7z file, and then download vita deploy fhe.zip file. Extract the final HE 1.93, you're going to get a folder. Just move the vita deploy fhe zip file into the extracted final HEs folder run the final HE application. Okay, so if you have followed these steps perfectly, you're going to see an uh, arrow right to the side, which means if you have copied and pasted the Vita deploy FHE into the correct destination. Just click on that arrow, select Vita deploy, select trim H Encore to 7 MB. Next step would be to connect your PlayStation Vita. Okay, so the next step would be to connect your PlayStation Vita onto your computer. Here on Final H Encore, it says waiting for connection to PlayStation Vita. Most of you guys would face or might face connection issues. Even after connecting your PlayStation Vita, the computer might not detect it. In that case, there are some steps to troubleshoot the issue. I'm going to posting those steps on the description. Just follow those steps individually for one of them is going to work. Let's just go to content manager after connecting the PlayStation Vita and select copy content. If there is not going to be any kind of issues, you're going to get this screen where on the very top, you're going to see your connected device. And additionally on the screen, it will say connected to PS Vita 3.74. Just, just click on let's go and it will start the process. All right, guys, so whatever that was needed to be done through the application, it has been completed. So all we have to do now is select PS Vita system, go into applications, PS Vita and select all copy. Go ahead and press on OK. Let it copy. We can go ahead and exit the content manager. All right, guys, so everything that was needed to be performed through the PC has been completed. It's safe to disconnect your PlayStation Vita now, and we are going to close off content manager and scroll down onto the Vita screen, and we're going to get H Encore and Vita Deploy. These are the two files that we copied and pasted through the PC. There could be some instances when trying to run the H Encore, your Vita might restart, so no need to panic, just turn off the PlayStation Vita completely and turn it back on and try this process of running H Encore again. Press and hold the R button, go to H Encore, start, let go of the R button, hit on yes. The screen just flashed and here all we have to do, hit on exit. Here we don't need to do anything. Let's just go to settings. PlayStation Vita has been successfully jailbroken. You can see Henkaku settings, go ahead and hit Henkaku settings. Those who are going to see that this, this checkbox enable unsafe homebrew hasn't been checkmarked, just go ahead and select this and just go back. And now we are going to go to Vita deploy, hit on start. And now we're going to select install a different OS. Quick 3.65 install, just go ahead and select that. Now it's going to take a little bit of time, just let it commence the process.
make sure that when it's downloading the update package, just tap on your screen in order to prevent the Vita from getting into sleep mode. It's going to prompt you, do you want to downgrade from firmware 3.74 to 3.65? Just hit on X to confirm and it's going to continue in 20 seconds. So now it says X to accept these terms and start the installation. Just go ahead and hit X. And now it's going to perform the system update. The system update process has been completed. Let's go over to settings. Let's go into system, system information. Now we have the modified system software, which is 3.65. Now, some of the games will require the latest firmware version. So we can do a spoofing. So what we are going to do is go into Henkaku settings, enable version spoofing and spoofed version. We are going to go into here we're going to delete whatever version it's on and put in the updated version, which is 3.74 and hit on enter and go back. And now we are on version 3.74. So yeah, that's it. You have successfully jailbroken your PlayStation Vita system and it's a permanent jailbreak. Congratulations. Now we're going to perform the next step where we're going to show you guys on the next video how to use the SD2 Vita and expand your storage. All right, guys, so after performing those steps, it's time for us to increase the storage capacity of the PlayStation Vita. Make sure that you have a SD2 Vita adapter and also a micro SD card that you need to put inside the adapter. I'm using a SanDisk 128 gigabytes ultra micro SD card. Insert the adapter into where the game cards goes in. Start Vita deploy. Go into miscellaneous, format a storage device, and you're going to select format a storage device and select format target storage. Now for some of you guys, it might take a little bit. It's not going to show anything on the screen. Do not panic. Wait until you see this message. Hit on OK. Now it's time to restart the PlayStation Vita. So we're going to shut it down and then we're going to turn it back up. So once the Vita has been turned on, go into settings and go into devices, select storage devices, check this box, use YAMT. Time to restart the PlayStation Vita one more time. Okay, so after performing those steps, run Vita deploy, go into file manager. I'm going to show you guys that we have successfully mounted our external storage. If you check UMAO, it says 1.03 MB out of 119 gigabytes. So this is our external storage. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have to transfer all the files from the internal storage into the external storage. So the system files can be found in UXO. Just highlight UXO, go into UXO. You're going to have to transfer all of these files in order to do that, just select all of these files using the square button. Except this particular file that's named as Skello Trash. After you're done selecting all of the files, hit on triangle, press copy, hit on the circle to go back, go into UMAO, just press the D-pad down one time, press the triangle again, and select paste. So all the system files have been copied into the extended storage device. So now we're going to just go back. After that, go into settings, go into devices, storage devices. So here you're going to change the UXO to SD2 Vita. Additionally, you can change the UMAO into internal storage for the 2000 models. And for the 1000 models like myself, we're going to select memory card. We're just going to exit and restart the Vita one last time. Okay, so the process of upgrading the storage has been completed. How do we confirm? We just go into settings, go into system, go into system information, and here, if you check, memory card, it says capacity 
119 gigabytes, free space 119 gigabytes. We have successfully upgraded our storage capacity of the PlayStation Vita. Wait, before you guys leave, there is a couple of more things that needs to be done. We're gonna have to prevent the PlayStation Vita from updating any kind of future updates. Go into settings, go into system, go into auto start settings and uncheck this box. It says download update file for system software. We do not need that. It's going to create issues with the jailbreak. We head over to Vita deploy. We're going to download a couple of applications and then you're all good to go. Go into app downloader. We're going to download Vita Shell. This is the file transfer app that is going to enable you guys to connect to a PC. The second application that we're going to download is the ITLS installer. The third one would be Adrenaline. The other stuff I'm going to show you guys in separate tutorials, including Adrenaline. This is a PlayStation Portable emulator. I will make a separate guide for this. For now, let's just go ahead and install it. Go ahead and select download the selected apps and all the applications are downloaded. Go ahead and hit on triangle and select mark all and then hit on triangle once more. Go to more and select install all. And here we have all three of the applications. So here we're going to do a couple of stuff with Vita Shell. Hit on select. It will allow your PlayStation Vita to connect to a PC using a USB cable. And hit on start. As USB device, we're going to select SD to Vita. Let's just go ahead, select ITLS installer. Here you don't have to do much, just hit on X and install the full ITLS package. Okay, so we are done with these setups. So now we are completely done with the jailbreaking process. There is also another way to jailbreak. I'm going to make a separate tutorial of that because I don't want to make it too much complicated. You can actually jailbreak the PlayStation Vita without using a PC. So literally you can jailbreak the PlayStation Vita using the PlayStation Vita itself. It's the same process, all you have to do is perform an additional step that I'm going to show you guys on a separate video. Vita. So this is how you perform a complete jailbreak and upgrade your storage capacity. The fun stuffs are going to start after this in the following videos. So if you like this tutorial guys, you know what to do. Hit on the like button, share your thoughts in the comments section. Let me know how you found this tutorial. For new users, please make sure to hit on that subscribe button. Every bit of support helps me a lot. And I'm gonna see you guys on the next video. Dr. Root7 signing off. Peace.